would we like to make a, a, a video here at this point? Sure. Today, I think what we've really been talking about is the importance of investigating web-based virtual worlds and why that is so important. Uh, for me as a librarian, the importance of coming into this web-based virtual world is accessibility for people who it's difficult for them to download the software and the steep learning curve of virtual worlds um, is a problem. But a virtual world like this, web-based world of Cyber Lounge, people can easily access it, come in and be introduced to what we like to call a sense of presence when you're talking with other people online and you're able to interact with content visually and share and connect that with that shared sense of presence. Yeah, I think that uh, that's one of the things that we definitely find to be the case in virtual worlds. Um, and it, it, that works just as well in Cyber Lounge on the web because we still see a virtual world in which we have several people, in this case, is several people sitting around and talking to each other. Um, and uh, of course, we, we are able to talk just as well <laughs> as, as we could over any other device, or well, almost pretty much as well as if we could see people it, it actually live. Um, so uh, this is one of the advantages. We noted another advantage that I thought that is not so easily no met, noticed, and that is we we were able, we did we only knew roughly what time we were coming in. We did not have to make any prior arrangements. We did not have to log in. Uh, you may have logged in. I did log in, but. We don't have to if we didn't if we don't want to, uh, and we don't have to have an account if we uh, simply want to drop in. Mr. Blue, I think Mr. Blue does have Blue Wave does have an account, uh, but he may or may not have used it. Um, I I know Val, you have an account, um, and of course one of the advantages of having an account is that you get you do get a, a your own world to experiment in, but we do get the capability to come in incidentally so that if, for example, uh, you had uh, another person that you were talking to, you could just uh, on the phone or on Skype or some other way, you could just tell them, why don't you drop in and they would be easy, they would be able to do that with, uh, well, essentially no more, no more effort than it takes to go to another web page. Exactly. And I'm very excited about the possibility of being able to import some content here, such as the, um, the digital citizenship exhibit content that we're creating, which we want to simplify and call digital street smarts so that anyone can realize how it's important that we understand um, what it means today in digital culture to, to connect uh, globally and the responsibilities that that you know, makes all of us um, need to really own up to. Mm, yes. Well, as a matter of fact, of course, uh, you, you and I, I guess, are, are accustomed to working with people all over the world, as long as they can speak English. Maybe you can speak some other language, but I can't. Well, we're, we're in the U U.S. citizens. We don't know how to speak on any other language. Um, but uh, uh, we talk to people all over the world. Um, and... Uh, Sometimes we sometimes we uh, share get useful information about their culture, uh, advice about their culture, um, illustrations of the culture. And of course, uh, in in, in OpenSim, uh, there's an awful lot of content that they bring in that uh, exhibits their culture. And that, of course, is one of that actually is a potential interest to librarians. Libraries in general. Uh, can't exhibit furniture um, very much. They just have to have their own furniture, but they don't have the room to exhibit a lot of furniture. Uh, but in a virtual world, the libraries have, well, about as, as much space as they can fill. Uh, they, can ha they can keep expanding indefinitely. And so they can illustrate, um, well, instead of just a book on um, antique furniture, you could have to have bills that actually 
display the antique furniture in three dimensions. Absolutely, and that's something I'd like to see happen at the Antique Pattern Library in Kitely. Pull in some of the real antique patterns and put them on the furniture. Uh, yes. Oh, yes, that's right. We've got the patterns, but uh, we don't have them actually in use, and the patterns never were never designed merely to be looked at as little squares. Um, they were designed, for example, to be on, I guess, furniture or on the uh, blankets or something, or perhaps on a floor as rugs. Right, exactly. And I think that's a great um, use of virtual world libraries to show and archive things from the past and bring them in, you know, visually so that you can actually enter and, and, and look at those, you know, while you're interacting uh, like we are here. Hmm. Uh, yes. Um, well, let's see. 